Alright, so what have we got here? We've got a standard Domobot build. You can find the instructions to build this particular robot on the website. And that's just for the base. And I've added in a little extra bit on top. So that part there is extra on top of the Domobot build. I've got an ultrasonic sensor that I've got mounted on the center there. And on the back, I've just got a standard LEGO NXT light sensor. So we're going to use that light sensor as our reversing light. We're not actually going to use it to take any measurements, but that will give us our little flashing red light. All right, let's have a look at the software now and see how we actually put this together. Okay, so we saw the hardware that we're using, using that Domobot with the ultrasonic sensor and that light sensor on the back. But how do we actually get that light sensor to flash to make it look like a, a reversing light? We're going to start off by just uh, putting together the, the reversing action. And we'll worry about the other parts of the, the program a little bit later. So the first thing we need to do is to make our robot uh, reverse once it's seen that object. So I'm going to come up to the common palette, grab a move block. And in this case here, I'm going to make it move for a certain number of seconds. Makes it easier when I start doing my beeping and the flashing of the light, if we uh, keep it all in seconds. In this case here, I'm going to make my robot drive backwards for 4 seconds. We'll make sure the direction is going backwards. And I don't want to go too fast. As you're reversing, you don't want to run into anything else. So let's keep it around about the 20% power. So that'll get my robot driving backwards. What I also want to be doing is I want to be flashing a light and making that beeping sound at the same time. So in this case here, we're going to put a couple of tasks in parallel, which means they'll be running at exactly the same time. Let's start with the beeping one. So now the beeping one, what I want to do is come up here to action. I'm going to grab a sound block. Let's pop it right up the top there. And in this case here, rather than doing a particular sound file, I'm going to grab a tone. And the tone that I'm going to choose, let's choose our lovely F note there, or G note. I'll stick with the G. And in this case here, it's going to play the G note for half a second. So if I play it for half a second, I'm then going to put in a little delay, because I don't want that sound to be continuous. I want that beep, beep kind of sound. So I've got myself a wait block in here, and rather than waiting for sensor, I'm going to wait for some time. The time I'm going to wait for is 0 0.5 seconds. So now this will beep for 0 0.5 seconds and this will wait for 0 0.5 seconds. So these two blocks together take up one second in total. Now I can just repeat those blocks four times over to get my four seconds of reversing but it's much easier if I use something like a loop. So come down to my flow blocks, grab a loop, let's pop that one, I'll just pop it over here for the moment draw a box around these two and drag them and put them inside my loop. I'm then going to set up that loop. Instead of running forever, we're going to do it based on a certain count. So in this case here, we're going to do a count four times. So each one of these, half a second, half a second, total makes one second. I repeat the whole thing four times, gives me four seconds. Let's just drag that back over here. Now I need to wire that one in parallel. NXTG has a lovely little tab just here, and if you hover your mouse over, you'll see a little wiring tool, like a little uh, cotton reel. If I click and drag that up, I can get those ones now to run in parallel. So at the same time as I'm driving backward for four seconds, I'm going to be playing this note for four seconds, this beep. So there's our driving, there's our beeping. The last thing we need is our little flashing light, our little warning light to let people know that our robot is actually reversing. The way we can do that is a little bit tricky. We're going to use a sensor block. In this case here, we're going to use a light sensor. Now, normally when we use something like a light sensor, we're using it to take a reading. But in this case here, I'm not interested in the reading. What I'm interested in is just the, the red um, LED inside it, what we usually use for reflected readings. Um, we just need to be able to turn that on and off. To do that, there is a generate light function here, and that's currently ticked. So similar to what we've done with our beeping sound, what I want to do is to generate light for half a second. Zero point five. And then I'm going to use that same block, but this time I'm going to turn the generate light function off. You'll notice here there's a little image of a light there, and on this one here that image is no longer there. Turn the light on for half a second, turn the light off again for half a second.
turn the light on for half a second, turn the light off for half a second. So half a second on, half a second off, that's one second in total. We'll need to use another loop similar to what we've used with the sound effect there. So in my flow blocks, I'll grab a loop, click and drag all of those, and pop them in. And again, I want this one to be running at the same time as everything else. So I'm just going to place it below, look for my little cotton reel wire, drag and bring that down. If you don't see that little cotton reel, you can find it by just holding down the shift key. So I'm just pressing the shift key anywhere on a sequence bar, hold down the shift key and you can branch things off in parallel. So this little routine here, this will make our robot drive backward for four seconds and at exactly the same time we'll be playing a note and flashing a light. Now if I want to use this uh, little routine regularly, I could just keep writing this in all the time, but I'm going to make it a little bit simpler for myself and I'm going to create a my block. So essentially I'm going to turn all these blocks here into one single block that I can use later. I'm going to draw a box around all of these to highlight them all. And you'll notice little blue outlines around all the major structures. And then up here in my menu section I'm going to come across to edit, make a new my block. With this my block I'm going to give it a name. Up the top here, block name, I'm going to call this reversing. And a quick description, this block will make the robot reverse for four seconds while beeping and flashing a light. Nice little description there. This is handy for if I come back later to it, I can get an idea of what I was trying to do there. Now I can finish this straight away if I want to, but in this case here I'm just going to press the next button because I want to just make the my block look a little bit nicer. At the moment, that's what the my block will look like. Pretty boring. I can put in some extra little um, icons to, to give me a better idea of what this um, one's doing. So in this case here, what I'm effectively doing, I'm kind of stopping and backing up a little bit. So I'm going to grab a little stop icon, drag that up. It's a little bit big, so I might just shrink it down move it around and you can see over here this is what my icon is starting to look like. I'm also going to do a bit of a reverse like that. So I can see now in my icon it just gives me a better idea of what's actually happening here. Click on the finish button and it's now converted all those blocks into that one particular reversing one. If I need to edit that one at any time, I double click on it and it brings me up to my reversing block where I can make any changes I need to. Whoop, one thing I forgot to do in here, I don't want to be flashing that light forever, I want to be flashing that light based on a count. Same as before, we're going to be counting for four times. That's half a second, that's half a second, everything in here takes one second, repeat it four times for four seconds. I go back to my main program. So let's now start assembling the rest of my program. I'm going to start my robot just driving forward. Driving forward. In this case here I'm doing unlimited because I don't know when the wall's going to come up to me. I don't know when I need to stop and turn around. Then going to go and do a wait block and I want to wait for that ultrasonic sensor. Wait for the ultrasonic sensor. In my case it's plugged into port 2. Wait until it gets within gets less than a particular range. I'm going to convert to centimetres and put in around about 20 centimetres. That's fairly close. Not too far away, but not excessively close. Drive until I see the wall and then start reversing up and reversing up for four seconds and beeping at the same time. Once I've done that, I'll put in a little turn because I don't want to just keep driving up against the same wall. In my case, I'm going to turn to the right and a small turn of around about 300 degrees. Now remember this is 300 degrees of the wheel not 300 degrees of the robot so keep that in mind. Drive, see the wall, reverse beeping and flashing the light, turn around. To make this thing happen over and over again I'm going to place the whole thing inside a loop. Highlight all those blocks, click and drag them in And there we have it, there's the program. 
if you need to use that reversing block again in a different program, because we've used uh, because we've created it we're using a my block, it actually has been stored. If I come across down here, down to my different palettes, we've got the common palette, we've got the complete palette, we've also got the custom palette. Now in that custom palette, we've got a section where all my blocks are kept, and you'll see that our reversing my block, the one that we've just created, is here, so we can use it on any other program we want. Just a word of warning, this my block is specific to this computer. So if you copy your files onto a USB stick and try and move it to another computer, it may not open as properly. If you want to do that, you'll have to look into something like create, pack and go, but we won't go into too much detail on that, but a create, pack and go will package up everything you need to do to move to another computer.